All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 29th, 2012. Um, we... uh, before we get started, let me get into the, uh, the people who are on a free trial. Tonight is a partners meeting. Um, you need to be a partner to get into that partners meeting. In the partners meeting, I'm going to go over this new jewel of an indicator that we have down here. Um, I'll go over how to use it, how to set it up. You know, a couple of ways that you can that you can use it. Um, there's you know practically an infinite number of ways that you can use it. It's got so many parameters. Um, I try to build a lot of things into it for you, make it a really useful thing. You know, we don't just go around throwing new indicators out there, willy nilly. Um, <clears throat> so to be in the partners meeting tonight, obviously you need to be a partner, and um, if you do not have the information you need to become a partner. Send me an email at tech at cfrn.net. That's t e c h at cfrn.net, or you could send it to support at cfrn.net. That will eventually go to me as well. Um, if you have not taken the free trial yet, go to www.cfrn.net forward slash apply. That's a p p l y, and you can take the free trial directly from there. With the free trial, you get all the indicators that you see here. And I do mean all of them. Um, actually, you don't get, you don't get the multi-line combo, sorry, <laughs> you don't get that one, but you get all the other indicators that you see here, um, and, <laughs> and you get something better than the multi-line combo, but, uh, you get all the indicators that you see here, and you get the data and the charts for five business days to, uh, to try it all out. All right. You also get to sit in our live trading room in the morning where we go over the trades, where we trade live in front of you, and we go over a bunch of the trades as they're setting up. Um, okay, so that's that's what you get. That's the free trial. Tonight is the partners meeting. You need to be a partner to be in there. Starts at 9 p.m. Eastern time, sharp. Okay. Um, all right, now moving on. Morning's results. We ended the morning. We're minus one tick YM. We took one last trade at the, at the end of the uh, morning session to get us back to minus one tick. And we are plus 24 ticks on the Russell. Okay. I'll find that DOM. Let me dig that DOM up and show you. Here it is, plus 24 ticks on the Russell. I did make a mistake this morning on the Russell, and it cost me 8 ticks. Um, so it would have been plus 32. And then, you know, there were a bunch of trades that I missed, obviously, that, that went on to win. So, you know, it was an easy 40 or 50 tick day on the Russell if you wanted it to be. Okay. Let's move the Russell aside, and we'll go over what happened with the ES first, okay? Um, here we go. Here is our ES chart. Now, this is a 10,000 contract chart. This was a little pre-market right here. I had, I had outlined it this morning at the start of the uh, morning session. Pre-market, we had a bearish cross and pull back up to the BBC. This was a nice spot right here, but you would have had to have been up at 7.46 Eastern Time to take that trade. It moved down. Now, after it started to move down and the market opened up, um, the BBC got into the weekly trading zone right here. Price pulled away from it, pulled back up to it. This is another potential trade right here. When the BBC is inside the zone and it's headed down like that, um, it's usually going to put up some pretty good resistance right there. Okay, you see it did do that. It sent it down about five points, I think, right? From 90.78 down to, all right, four points. Pulled back up to the zone, got rejected by the zone again, and it's right now back the same four points about. All right. Um, after this bearish cross, it pulled back to the BBC. And at the end of the live trading room, we said we had a bullish cross here, and it was pulling back to the BBC, but we weren't going to trade long into the weekly trading zone. One of the fellows that's on trial in the uh, morning session um, <clears throat> had asked about the zones, and I don't trade into the zones. You know, if I know the zones are there, I don't trade into the zones on the ES, the YM, the Russell, on anything. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't take this. The weekly trading zones, for those of you who don't know, are delivered um, pre-market Monday morning. Okay, they're delivered to everyone prior to the open on Monday morning, everyone that's a partner or on trial, I believe. At least everyone that's a partner, um, you get your weekly trading zones. All right, so we're we're getting rejected from that zone right there. Uh, we got a bullish cross after that with a pullback up to the BBC. The cycle was in favor of the short trade, so there was another possibility for a short trade right there. All right, that since dropped a couple of points. 
Mm. That is pretty much it on the 10K. All right. The 2100 looked a lot like the 10K all morning. You know, early on, right here, same time, there was a pullback to the BBC. Um, right here, it was inside the the weekly trading zone. Same thing, opportunity to short right there. Again, going into the zone. Again, the bearish cross with the bounce back off of the BBC right there. Okay, the cycle was in favor of that. Um, right here, where it hit the BBC, the cycle was not below the 50, so that wasn't the highest um, probability trade. Right now, right in here, the cycle is below the 50. That that tends to have a higher probability. Okay. Mm, yep, that's about it on the 2100. Okay. Uh, let's look at the four tick range quickly. The four tick range did chug out a couple of trades this morning. I think. Um, let's see. Here was the open. You couldn't trade into the weekly trading zone, so price needed to get below it before you could actually take one. Once it got below it right here, the bands were outside the black, and it hit the BBC right there. That was the first pullback to the BBC with the bubble outside the bands. Price since dropped off, and it came back up. You needed a fresh bubble to short right here, so there's no trade there. No trade on the long side. Over here, we have a fresh bubble and a lower swing pivot. Okay, so right there was the spot to trade it. That's a George trade because the BBC is inside. Um, is inside the box. If you want to wait for the BBC to get outside the box, well, you're still waiting. All right. If you're going to take the George trade, that one right there would have worked. Okay, that was it right there. Now, let's see. What else did we have? I think that's it on the ES, okay? Let's go over to the YM. Now, I took a few trades on the YM this morning, and I missed a couple of trades. Now, I lost this one right here. Um, this one... Stopped me out for seven ticks. This one I didn't take because the ES and the YM were all right around the zones, so I didn't take it, and I was actually focused on the Russell at the time. I pretty much missed it. Sorry, Doug. Um, but I didn't take that one. I put in a sell stop down here at 976 because the low was right here. The low of the day was right here. And I figured if it broke that, it was probably going to keep going. Um, what it did do is it went through, it triggered me in right here at 976. It dropped down dropped down quite a few ticks here, but before it did, it stopped me out right here to the tick. It stopped me out. Then it dropped down 10 ticks in favor of my trade. Um, I shorted again here at the BBC, and it went right through me and stopped out. Um, that was what I did on the 500 contract. Okay, So that put me down a little bit on the YM. And you all recall, um, plus one tick, I mean a minus one tick on the YM. So let me get over my other YM chart. Just give me a moment, i got to find it. Um, YM four tick range, here it is. All right, now on the YM four tick range, here are a couple of trade setups on the YM four tick range. Um, right here, we took that one for ten ticks. Now, this is the same setup that you're going to see me point out over here on, on the Russell charts in a minute. Okay? And you're going to see me point it out on the NQ chart in a minute. Okay? It's the same setup. What I'm looking for... What I'm looking for here is for price to test the BBC. The MA1 to get above it. Price to test it. Price to get back up above it. And when it get, gets back up above it, preferably you'll have this divergence right here. This type of divergence. Okay? And when you get that, and you get this cross down here. I keep trying to draw this thing, but it's not letting me. Um, let me do it slowly. There we go. That bullish cross right there, that will usually indicate that the price is going to move up, okay? In this case, we took the long trade here and we got 10 ticks out of it. Um, over here, there was another one right here. I don't Oh yeah, I took I took this short right here. Um, you see, everything was in favor of the short trade. All the same stuff. Okay, everything was pointing down. We had the cross down right there. I took the short right here. It stopped me to the tick right here, and then and then it dropped right down to my profit target. All right, when it pulled back up here, this had a bearish cross and a pullback to the BBC, and 
we also had some divergence in favor of the trade right there and right there. So I took that trade and I got 10 ticks back on that one. Okay. Um, actually, I didn't get 10 ticks. I got, I forgot how many ticks I took on that. But I, I actually traded uh, twice as many contracts right there. Um, since then, we have had, right over here, we have bullish divergence. Okay. Bullish divergence there. Uh, bullish divergence here. And we're crossed up down here. The only problem is that the MA1 is below the BBC. Okay. So price is chopping around in here a little bit. Probably not a good place to trade right now. Okay. Now let me get the NQ out here. Because the NQ was pretty tradable for the early part of the morning. Does anybody have any questions about any of this stuff so far? Now, I know this is a lot of markets. These are, you know, it's a lot of information in a lot of markets, but what I recommend to folks is focus on one market, focus on one setup, find one that suits you the best, you know, that suits your risk, your risk profile, your risk tolerance, um, your personality, and trade that. Make money with that. If you've made money with that one, then you can move on to another one another market. You know, if that market happens to be flat, then look around. There's, there's bound to be another market that we're trading that, uh, that is moving where you can make money. Okay? Now, in this particular case right here, we started off the morning right here. Now, I didn't trade any DNQ this morning, but I'm just pointing all this out. Okay? We started off the morning right here. We had the bullish cross over the BBC. Price pulled back down, tested the BBC, we had bullish divergence there and there, and we had a cross up right here. When price closed above right there, right there, was the opportunity to jump into this, okay? It turned around, came over here. You can see price, the, the MA1 crossed below the BBC, price tested the BBC, and it closed back down below it right there with some bearish divergence and a cross down right there. This over here was another attempted uh, pullback to the BBC. It failed, closed down below the MA1, bearish divergence, bearish divergence, a cross down right there. Same thing, opposite way, okay? Same thing over here, opposite way, same thing over here. And it just went on and on and on, all day. All right, this was the NQ. All right, I can, I can go through and keep marking these up for you, but I think you guys can pretty much see it's, it's the same thing. You know, right here, and there and there. Um, let's see. We didn't have any divergence on this right here. A little bit more risk. Um, the MA1 crossed to the upside, so nothing there. We didn't have any divergence here. And so it's starting to flatten out right here. All right. We didn't get any more opportunities right in here. But that was the NQ, so it was really tradable this morning, all right, for the first couple hours. Now, let me... Move this off to the side, and the 6E didn't really give much at all today. In the way it trades, I think it had one opportunity. Um, and this one, where this thing is, was not it. Um, it was over here. And this was it. The elbow broke to the downside. White was leading the green down here, so we're expecting the first pullback to the BBC to hold right here. Okay, right here at 132.81, we're expecting that pullback to the BBC to hold. It did hold, and it pushed it down. That was the only opportunity this morning. Okay, um, entry on that would have been up here at 3280, 3281, right in that range, and it dropped down to, let's just call it 3260 for uh, 20 ticks, the equivalent of a five-point ES move. Okay. There. All right, so now we've covered the NQ, the 6E, the ES, and the YM. Now let's get to the Russell. The Russell you can see right now is really choppy, so there's not really anything going on here that you want to get involved with. But let's just scroll back here. I think I put these backwards. I like to have this one over here and this one right here. 
All right. Now today, well, tonight in the partners meeting anyway, we are going to introduce this new indicator right down here, the CF slingshot. I think I've already gone over it a little bit, but I'll just show you the parameters on it. Um, these are all the parameters on it. If you start right here with data, those are all the parameters. So there is a ton that can be done with this thing. You can you can flip lines on and off. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, you see this right here and this right here are out of the same indicator. Uh, I can make any one of these, any one of these or these or any any one of the combos that you see any kind of combo um, on any of the charts out of this single indicator just by turning things on and off and changing the speeds. Um, basically what we've done here is uh, is provide everyone the opportunity to to sort of create um, something within their own tolerances okay and I also wanted to make something that's gonna that's gonna scale across markets and it's gonna scale across time frames and this I think answers that all right now that said let me just uh, let me just show you a little bit about it you can see right here these red and blue lines those are the cycles from three different time frames of combos okay and this one black line right here is the same as the one black line you see down here okay that's it's the equivalent of uh, the fast line the fastest line of a middle speed combo I know you're probably getting all lost in the details with this but let me just uh, blow this up a little bit and go over it and then we'll go over the uh, the actual trades that we took okay now for a fairly conservative trade here is when all three of these cycles all three different speed cycles are in one area and this is pulling back to the other area okay so you have a divergence now I called this thing a slingshot you see I called it the CF slingshot and you can see when it does that it gives sort of the view of a slingshot like this is where you would hold it and this is the part you're pulling back okay and the idea is that the market is going to snap back in the direction that you're holding okay so right here everything's all down here it snaps back here a little bit consolidates as soon as the market starts to go in that direction you could get in same thing right here right here you know, are you guys following this on the charts? You know, I'm just going to remove this one right now because we don't need that anymore. There's two of them there, by the way. You guys probably didn't know that. Um, <clears throat> now, then this is just one of, of an infinite number of ways to actually use this thing. But you see right here, it pulled back, and all this is down here and headed down price snapped back. Over here, it pulled back. All this is headed up, and it snapped. Over here, all this is down, and it moved. Over here, all that's down. Over here, all that's there, and it goes up. Over here, all that's down there, and it goes down. You know, that's... We can go through days and days and days of this. You know, is it perfect? No. No. Only a fool would say they have the perfect indicator. Um, does it lead anything? No. Only a fool would try to get you to believe that things are leading. All these indicators that paint on the uh, on the chart, you know, tick by tick, they're all based on prior data. So, is it really good at using the information that it has to give you a good opportunity to get into a trade? Well, yes, yes, it does seem to be very good at that. Okay. Now, are you guys seeing all the opportunities here? I mean, it looks pretty straightforward to me, doesn't it? And you can play with this. You know, you can make these more meaningful. You can change time frames with it. You know, you can change this to whatever time frame you want so that your risk is, is good for you. If you don't want to trade as often as this trades, you know, you can, you can change it to a different time frame and look at it there and make all the adjustments you need. 
and I'll help you with all that if you need it. Okay? Now, all that said, let's get to the trades we took today. Anybody have any questions about any of that? I don't see any hands going up or anything, so... I'll just go to the trades we took. All right, we started off the morning right here. We shorted right here. Okay, we shorted here. We bought it back down here. Um, made a few ticks on that one. We missed this trade on the long side. Missed this trade on the short side. Didn't do anything in here. We shorted again here. Took ten. Uh, you know, I I don't know if I was using that. Let me just go back here. I think this is the one that I was actually writing the actual trades on. Yeah, we shorted here. Um, we missed a few trades in there. We went long here. This is the one where I made a mistake this morning. Down here, I had gone early before it crossed right here. I had gone early, but I made it back a couple minutes later right here. When it did actually cross, I took the short right there. Now, the reason I shorted here is we had divergence here, divergence here, the cross down here. It tested the BBC and closed back down below the MA1. Okay. Um, let's see. This one over here I got out of early. We had divergence, divergence, the cross down, tested the BBC, um, <clears throat> and it closed below the MA1. I got out of this one at break even. I moved my stop up to break even really quick on that one. That was you know, that was probably another mistake, but it <clears throat> it did definitely go the full point. The thing rolled around in here. Um, it crossed up there, up there, and up there. This was the area to go along. I don't think I took that trade. Um, here was another one right over here. It tested the BBC, closed back down below it. There was bearish divergence there, bearish divergence there, and a cross down right there. Um, let's see, and that brought us into the break. So I, I don't know, I don't remember which trade I actually took. I don't think this was my last trade, this break even one. I think I actually took one of these other trades over here. Um, <clears throat> I might have taken this one right here for 10 ticks. My last trade, I think, was plus 10 ticks. And anyway, that's how I ended up with plus 24. Okay, there was more opportunity in there. If you were trading this chart over here, we'll say, okay, there was there was definitely more opportunity in there. Now, I know this is, um, I'm going a little over right here, but I, I just want to uh, make sure everybody sees all this stuff. This trade right here, this one, synced up right over here as well. Um, this right here, where there was the divergence right here. We, over here, had the same type of divergence and a cross down right there. Okay. With this right here, there was an opportunity to go long. Over here, we didn't have the opportunity to go long. Okay. I was pointing out that we had this divergence, and had we closed back down below the MA1, um, in the live trading room. Had we gotten the close below the MA1 and this crossed down at this time, that would have been an opportunity to go short, but it didn't come, it didn't happen. It never happened. Okay. Um, over here we have some pretty good bullish divergence for possibility to go long right there. Um, over here we had a similar thing. I actually took that one. Um, let's see. Over here, this, what this is going to do is filter out some of the things that are available on here and on here. You know, and that's just one of the many ways you can use this. All right. All right. Well, I think I got my point across about that. Um, again, if anybody's got any questions, you can, you can uh, call me mm -hmm. or email me. You can email me at support at cfrn.net. If you're on the live trial, um, my phone number is in that email that I sent out to you. You can call me at that number. If um, if you have not taken the trial, go to www.cfrn.net forward slash apply. All right, that's it. I'll wrap it up.